Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today is January 15th, 2020. And the poem that I'm going to read today is by an old friend of ours here on the podcast, someone who we were return to pretty often. That's Richard Wilbur, an American poet who lived from 1921 to 2017. He, of course, was a two-time winner of the Pulitzer Prize in 1957 and in 1989. And then in 1987, he was Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress. And the poem that I'm going to read today is called Orchard Trees, January. It goes like this. It's not the case, though some might wish it so, who from a window watch the blizzard blow white riot through their branches vague and stark, that they keep snug beneath their pelted bark. They take affliction in until it gels to crystal ice between their frozen cells, and each of them is inwardly a vault of jewels rigorous and free of faults, unglimpsed by us until in May it bears a sudden crop of green-pronged solitaires. I love this poem. This is uh, one of my favorite Richard Wilbur poems. And uh, I like it for a few reasons. The first one is uh, sort of formal. There's just a few little things that I want to touch on quickly. It's a 10-line poem that is made up of five two-line stanzas. And uh, there's a ton of enjambment in this poem. Only two lines in the whole poem have end stops. There is a period at the end of line, uh, line, line four, and then there's a period on the, after the last line, line 10. And then there's uh, like six other lines that have enjambment where the lines blend together. And the way he does this, the way he pushes these lines together is really interesting because take, for example, the second line. We get this, who from a window watched the blizzard blow. So we've got these these repetitions of sounds in the W, who, window, watch, and blow all have that O or ow sound, uh, the W sound multiple times. And then he also rams those together with blizzard, blow. And so then that slows you, that sort of can trip you up as well if you're not careful. And then you go into the next line, line three on the new stanza, white riot through their branches, vague and stark. So he puts, because of his syntax and because of the words he chooses and because of the way he arranges those words, um, which I know is syntax, but uh, because of the way he arranges those sounds, he he pushes the poem forward and then he pulls you back. So just as you feel like you're, you're wanting to race through the poem, he uh, trips you up and it causes you to slow down. And it's a really interesting, almost uh, ironic way to force you to be contemplative, to, to reflect and be careful about and thoughtful about what he is saying and doing in the poem. So I really like that. That's a, you know, not an uncommon thing for Richard Wilbur. But then there's also some interesting things that he's doing with pronouns here. And I think this gets us into the heart of the themes of this poem. The poem begins with this line, it's not the case. And then of course we want to know, well, it's not the case that what, um, but he sort of trips us up. Um, by by saying you know by giving us this line about people watching from a window watching the a blizzard blow white riot which is a great way of describing snow through their branches vague and stark but if we take out that clause right there we get in just by focusing on the beginning of the first line and then the fourth line we get it's not the case that they keep snug their pelted beneath their pelted bark so we can presume that that they is is um the uh, trees that they is trees or you know perhaps animals living in the trees but it seems like it's trees right but in that subordinate clause there he talks about um people watching through the wizards uh, th- through the through the watching the blizzard uh with blizzard blow i just i just realized i just took the w sound and the the b sound and dropped one of them all together in a completely separate word but he he starts kind of mixing in all these different pronouns which I think is really interesting when you get to the the later theme of this poem, which is the idea that these trees, they, they don't just hide behind their bark, but they take in all the, the trauma, all the affliction of the season, and they bring it into them, and they prepare it to bloom and to blossom into something beautiful in the spring, something that, you know, behind that bark, it's not just, the tree is not just sleeping. It's preparing to bring beauty to the world. Um, in the midst of affliction, it's not just curled up in a ball. It's not just um, abandoning its post, so to speak, but it's actually taking the affliction and it's turning it into to jewel, 
tojuo, right? He uses this word, um, they take affliction in until it gels. So until the affliction gels to crystal ice, which is, a, I mean, the, the illusion, the, the suggestion there is crystallize, right? To crystal ice between their frozen cells. And each of them is inwardly a vault. So each tree is inwardly a vault of jewels, rigorous and free of fault. The affliction has been turned into a faultless jewel that we don't get to see until May when all of a sudden there's green pronged solitaire that the whole world gets to see that we all get to rejoice in. Um, there's a, this is a, this is a wonderful poem. Um, I, I love this poem for this time of year. Um, and I, one of the reasons that I like the, 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 the vagueness of some of the pronouns, the the way the pronouns make you question who exactly he's talking about, who the antecedent is, is because I think it allows it to be, um, to become a more universal thing, to be to be to allow us to focus on the human capacity for this sort of thing, or at least to ask us, is there a human capacity to do what these trees are doing there? Because it's not the case that they keep snug beneath their pelted bark. Instead, they're busy at work producing something that's going to be beautiful later. So once more, here is Orchard Trees January by Richard Wilbur. It's not the case, though some might wish it so, who from a window watched the blizzard blow white riot through their branches vague and stark, that they keep snug beneath their pelted bark. They take affliction in until it gels to crystal ice between their frozen cells, and each of them is inwardly a vault of jewels, rigorous and free of fault, unglimpsed by us until in May it bears a sudden crop of green-pronged solitaires. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I will be back tomorrow with another.